Hey friends, lots of thrifty and savvy producers are getting Isotope's Community Appreciation Bundle this month, which includes one of my all-time favorite plugins, Stutter Edit 2. Now, side note, if you're viewing this video kind of later in the future and you miss the sale, just wait until the next one as it seems like Isotope is always running some kind of promotion. Anyway, Stutter Edit 2 is a genius effect processor plugin designed by BT, who's responsible for, in my opinion, one of the greatest electronic albums of all time, This Binary Universe. Seriously, go listen to it. It's incredible. He's also responsible for a global shortage in hair gel. Ha! Anyway, why should you care about yet another multi-effect plugin when you already have way too many of them? Well, this one is special for a number of reasons. With Stutter Edit 2, you can create a unique chain of effect events instead of static settings. You can call those settings up with MIDI notes, which basically translates to being able to play or sequence super complex effect setups with minimal effort and to be able to do all of that live on stage or quickly in the studio without worrying about running out of CPU. If none of that makes any sense at all, well, buckle up, let's check it out. Okay, so Stutter Edit 2 can live anywhere. I happen to enjoy it, and I think it'll make the most sense for this lesson to put it on the master track. So we're gonna drag and drop Stutter Edit 2 onto the master. Bam. And now we can see this interface has popped up. And if I play my music, this is what the, this is what the music sounds like without any Stutter Edit on it. All right, so not much going on there. So to start at the very beginning, Stutter Edit 2, you have two different play modes. At this moment, Stutter Edit is not going to do anything, okay? There's no way that it's going to work without me sending it MIDI notes, because you can see under play mode, it says MIDI, okay? Before we mess with that, what we're going to do is we're going to switch it over to auto mode. Now, this is the super plebe way of using this, this plugin. You simply just play the clock, and if the clock is running of your DAW in auto mode, it will automatically turn on the edit or the stutter or whatever, you, whatever the, they call them gestures, okay? It'll automatically turn on the gestures. So now we get. Okay, so you can scroll through these different gestures. Let's try a different random one. This is the one that's on F2 right now. <laughs> Let's try another one. sick. Okay, so what's going on here? Essentially, these are what's called gestures. A gesture could be any combination of a stutter, a buffer, distortion, lo-fi, chorus, so on and so forth, all of these effects, okay? And they have a duration. So, for example, this duration of this specific stutter or this specific gesture is one bar long, okay? So if I play this, we're looking at Ableton's clock right now. This whole entire thing is going to last one bar. Let's, let's go to a different one. So, Gator Discovery. Let's go ahead and listen to this. This is one bar long, all right? So watch this. Now you might be saying, well, it sounded a bit different the second time. Well, that's because the source material or what Stutter Edit is listening to is changing, okay? But the buffer effect and the stutter effect are capturing different snippets of the audio, okay? Now, at this moment, Stutter Edit is just going to always be on, okay? No matter what happens, Stutter Edit is on in auto mode, okay? Now, what you could do is you could open up this file browser, right? And what this file browser shows you are banks of gestures. So if I want to load up a whole new bank, I could just grab one of these and drag it over here. Now watch, all of a sudden, all of these effects are now available to us. And remember, we're still in auto mode, so zipper glitch is one bar long. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Pretty cool. Scroll through a couple of these. And I should also say this, you can borrow different gestures from different folders. So you can make yourself a custom folder of these gestures. Maybe I want to go into cinematic and trailers and I'll try this cinematic SFX and try SFX1 and I'll drag that to C4. So now I can go all the way to C4, for example, and now I have that one. And so now I could go into save as, and I could save this as my custom bank, boom. And now this will load up every single time, okay? As you can see, it appears in user banks. 
I already have been creating my own transition bank, but you can see this is where your custom banks will appear, okay? So now, again, this is the plebe way of using Stutter Edit 2. The true power of Stutter Edit is of course in getting in there and tweaking what it's actually doing, but also using MIDI to cycle between different effects, okay? That's where the real power of this is. So let's let's figure out how to set that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off of auto mode, which again, auto mode reacts to the clock of your DAW, whereas MIDI mode reacts to incoming MIDI notes. So the first thing we need to do, they have a suggestion for how you set it up. I'm gonna show you the way I do it. So I've got it on MIDI mode. Now, when I play this, Stutter Edit is just gonna pass audio through it. It's not gonna do anything. Now, I have to send MIDI notes to Stutter Edit to get it to do something. So this is just as simple as adding a MIDI track, okay, and saying MIDI out to master, okay, because that's where Stutter Edit is living. Stutter Edit is living on my master track. So I'm gonna go to output, master. And as you can see, Stutter Edit 2 is now available underneath. And since there's no other plugins on the master track that accept MIDI, it's just gonna go directly to Stutter Edit 2. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to make sure this track is armed with either auto or in so that Stutter Edit can hear the MIDI notes. So now when I play my MIDI keyboard, we can see, bloop, 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 see the lights? Now we know that Stutter Edit is going to be receiving MIDI. Now check this out. So I'm going back, I'm in MIDI mode. If I play this note, you can see that as I'm playing notes, we're changing which effect process is up, okay? So at this moment, if I play audio, and then I push a key down. Whoa. So as I push different keys down, we're getting different effects. Now, before we move on to what these individual effects can actually do, I want you to really wrap your brain around how amazing this is. What I could do is I could make a clip, for example. I'll just go ahead and make a clip right here, and I'll just go ahead and add a couple MIDI notes, right? So I'm not even physically playing this. I'm just gonna play this now. Check this out. <laughs> I'm gonna take that out of here and let's just get back to the basics here. And let's take a look at, let's open up Stutter and take a look at some of the things you might wanna do. So real quick side note, I want to tell you about my Ableton online courses. It's true that you can learn anything you want to learn about music production on YouTube without ever getting an education, but it's hard to know exactly what to search for, and much of the time the lessons are scattered and unfocused, if not just plain wrong. You could be completely self-trained, but that's definitely going to take you a very long time. Now here's where my courses come in. I've put together now three courses on Ableton production that are chronological and optimized to raise your skills to the next level quickly and efficiently. Between all three of these courses, there's 45 hours of hyper-focused content, which is constantly growing as I add more and more. So if you enjoy my teaching style and you take your music seriously and want to join a rad Discord community of amazing producers, check the links down below in the comments and in the description. All right, let's get back to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and load up a completely blank preset. Okay, so now we have a blank preset and I'm playing C3. You can see it'll switch to whatever you're playing depending upon the note you're playing. So now I'm just gonna go to C3. And you can see that it says inactive, there's nothing happening yet. I have to actually turn this on. So I click it and I turn it on and now we have a gesture. Let's go ahead and just take a listen to what it would do. So I'm just gonna play this music. Now I'll play C3. So let's break this down a little bit. First of all, before anything else, up here at the top, we have a couple extra controls I wanna talk about. So first of all, we have release. This is how long the gesture will last after you take your finger up. I always like to put this on instant, okay? Because I wanna push my finger down and I wanna let, when I let go, I want it to stop, okay? So that's what instant does. Now grid is basically saying how long it will wait until the gesture will start. I like to leave this actually on an eighth or a sixteenth because I want this to happen in sync with the music, right? So the grid, what it's basically saying is it's going to wait if you click your finger down until the next one eighth division of the beat to start the gesture, okay? So this is kind of a good thing to have on here. Now, the palindrome is basically saying all of how the gesture works can go either completely one direction constantly or it can go back and forth. Check this out.
right? So that would be a palindrome. Now, if I turn that off, it's just gonna go like this. Right, it's gonna go back to the beginning, okay? Now what freeze does is this basically freezes the buffer just like beat repeat would on Ableton, right? So essentially it will say, if I, whenever I push my key down, it's going to lock the buffer in that specific area, but it's still gonna follow the stutter sequence, okay? So we can see, we'll get into this in just a moment. This is our sequence of stutters, right? If freeze is on, it will only repeat that section of the buffer that it was playing when the key was pressed down. It may make more sense for me just to play it and, and do it. Check it out. Right? Now, if I turn freeze off, instead of freezing that specific section of the buffer, it will go through the buffer and follow the stutter pattern changing over time. So listen. So with the freeze off, it's a little more dynamic, right? It's, it keeps resampling the audio that's coming into it. And that's kind of fun. When your freeze is on, you can also set a duration. So we could set a full bar for duration and turn freeze on and listen. <laughs> because the buffer isn't as long as the duration, that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna lose audio. So instead you gotta kind of go smaller. So something like this. I find myself not really liking to use this. I kind of enjoy leaving freeze off and allowing the buffer to follow kind of the stutter rate and to keep sampling different sections of the audio. That's kind of the fun of it, right? Okay, so moving on to the actual stutter itself. Now we can click on this guy. Boom, whoa, look at this. Okay, so this is what was added with Stutter Edit 2 or one of the things that was added. You can actually now sequence the stutters, okay? And what that means is that we can say, okay, right here we can see that we're going to stutter an eighth of a bar, and then this is gonna stutter a 16th, a 32nd, and then we're going to smoothly ramp up to 64 and go all the way back down to, to a 16th. What does that mean to you? Well, essentially, we could scramble this up. If we look over here, we can see where it says reset. Now, reset's cool because it basically smooths this whole thing out. Now, if I left it at just the 16th, take a listen. Now that can get kind of boring after a while, right? What we can do instead is we can start to edit this and make it all kinds of fun. So we can go up and down, we can move all around, we can smoothly interpolate between these. We can make it really fast for just one section if we want. We can break the grid, right, and go somewhere in the middle. So there's all kinds of things that you can do. Let's take a listen to what we have now. <laughs> now at the moment, it's kind of locking its settings, okay, to these different stages, right? Do you see how it's locking? Now, what I could do is I could turn on free value. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to choose weird snippets or dividends of time, okay? Let's try this now. <laughs> now, now it kind of makes more sense with the stutter rate to focus on specific time divisions that are related to the clock, okay? So I'm gonna leave it like that. You can also choose some of these patterns that they already have here, right? Let's try this one out. <laughs> right, you can reverse that pattern. Now another thing you can do is you can change the speed of it. So we could make this a lot faster. So now for every one bar cycle of this gesture, this stutter edit rate sequencer I guess you could call it, or the curve is what they call it, is going to cycle twice as fast. So now we have <laughs> all kinds of nonsense, right? Okay. Okay, so now in the interest of time, I could break down all the other parts of the stutter section, but suffice to say, there's a lot of really amazing things you can do with it. I need to move on in order to get this video to be at least a relatively acceptable length of time. Moving on to the buffer, what the buffer does is it basically is taking sections of the audio and repeating them, loading them into the stutter engine and then allowing the stutter engine to play it back, okay? So the way upon which we are sampling the audio is what the buffer does and the way that we're playing the audio back is what the stutter section does. So, so first of all, we can unlock the left and the right buffer. So I could take the, the right buffer and reverse it. Check this out. Yeah. 
And in fact, to make this a little bit easier to understand, we're going to reset this so that we just have a straight 16 for now. Take a listen. Now this, of course, decouples the left and the right channel, so what do you get? You get amazing stereo uh, happening. In fact, completely out of phase audio, which can sound pretty sweet, but you gotta be kind of careful with this as this could make your music not mono compatible. This is just a fun little trick to do, okay? So we can reverse either side. So then moving on to movement, we can go to random, and what this will choose is random snippets of the buffer. When we play this, this will take the entire bar and start to spit out random different samples of it. Check it out. <laughs> and then we can choose the grid, okay? So if we make this really, really short, we can get some wild effects. <laughs> and so of course, just like stutter, there's so much to break down here. There's a jitter engine here. It's just crazy. There's so much more to see, but we're gonna focus on just kind of the macro stuff uh, in the interest of time. So now that we've looked at both of those, let's go ahead and turn these off and turn on distortion. So this is a really great way to kind of illustrate what's happening with stutter edit. So let's say for this key, this gesture, the C3 gesture, let's say for this one, we want to have a distortion that ramps up from nothing to something. Take a listen. <laughs> Pretty sweet. So what's going on here? We can see that we have a dry wet, all right? Something we could do is change this curve, okay? So this is a curve, right? Just like in the stutter part, we're looking at a curve. T take a listen. Let's go ahead and put it on palindrome mode for the fun of it. <laughs> Pretty sweet, right? So as you can see, we're going up and down this, and what this is basically showing is a dry wet control. So when it's all the way up here, it's totally wet. When it's all the way down here, it's totally dry. Pretty interesting. And yeah, one thing about Stutter Edit 2 that's so cool is you got all of these crazy saturation algorithms, right? And they sound really good. I, I happen to really like the wacky mode for some reason. I like the way it sounds. It's just really, it's really a really pleasing, I don't know why it's wacky, but it's, it's just really pleasing, right? You can split this into two bands, okay? And you can have a different saturation or clipping algorithm for each one of the bands, right? So we could maybe go soft taco for the highs and wacky for the lows. Now, this is a really basic way to use this, but we could go into the curve and we could choose some pretty wacky, crazy curves, right? Let's try this one out. Let's go ahead and we'll just leave this on one band mode for now. Take a listen. That's pretty sweet. Let's try a different curve out, maybe this. So moving on, we'll go ahead and look at something really that has a lot of effect on the sound. I'll leave the distortion on and we'll move over to comb. Now looking at comb, we can see that if I click on these different controls, they all have a slider. I, I hope you're starting to get really excited about this because of what this actually represents and how fun this can actually be, okay? What we can see is we have a beginning and an end, okay? This icon shows you the beginning of the curve and this icon shows the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this and we can watch. We have a dry wet slider with a beginning and an end. We have a frequency, spacing, and feedback all for this comb filter. Comb filters are essentially high feedback delays, okay? And so when you have a high feedback delay at low rates, you get that pitch kind of sound, that kind of like flanger, super rad kind of sound, right? Now, what we can do is we can make these, these curves custom, okay? We can customize these curves. Now, if I start really low and I go down to something like this, take a listen. So that's our curve. Let's go ahead and turn off palindrome mode. <laughs> right? Now, let's say that, for example, you want to set this up as kind of like a macro effect. That's not going to... You can hear how much the music ducks down when I'm using this effect. Check this out. I'm going to turn off distortion, okay? 
and we're going to turn off the dry wet. We're going to say instead that we're going to lock this to 100% wet. Now, at this moment, if I hold this key down, it's going to be completely wet. Now, I think when they were designing Stutter Edit, they realized that this kind of dry wet setup isn't always going to work for people that want to put Stutter Edit on their entire mix. We can actually set up custom uh, wet and dry mixes for each gesture. Okay, now, if that doesn't make sense, check it out. This final section over here is the output controls. So I can turn on this wet gain and this dry gain. I can say, okay, I'm going to lock my dry gain to 100% all the time. So even if this gesture is on or off, it will always be 100% dry. So the dry signal will always be passed through stutter edit. Okay, so what that means is that I can now dial in the wet gain, okay, to happen over a specific amount of time. Maybe we'll start it from zero or negative 50 dB and go up to, yeah, zero. So what this is going to do is this is going to, instead of take the dry signal out, the dry signal will always be in and it will slowly sweep in the wet signal over the course of the length of this gesture, which happens to be one bar. Go ahead and listen, it'll make more sense. Did you hear that? So we hear that and now we can take this curve, right? And we can kind of make it a little bit more fun, maybe do something like this. And you can see that my master track is clipping out. So something else we can do is we can turn on the limiter. Now this is really cool. This limiter is only active, okay, when the gesture is on. So right now the limiter, you might be like, well, I wouldn't want to have just this, this random limiter happening on my master track. Well, the cool thing about it is it only turns on when the gesture is actually occurring, okay, when the MIDI note is pushed down. So what I can do is I can say, all right, this is setting the threshold. So it's a limiter and likely my music is up pretty high, so I'll set the threshold pretty low. But I can take my output gain and say, all right, when the gesture is on, we're going to limit by 4 dB and we're going to make the output ceiling negative 2. Now hopefully this should be about the same volume when the key is pressed or when it's not. Take a listen. Looks like we have some more adjusting to do. Let's bring it down to negative 9 and see what we get. So as you can see, you can work with the limiter to make this kind of make sense, right? The limiter um, it, it's not very feature laden. And of course, you know, a normal limiter is going to sound a lot better, but they put that in here. This is kind of like a clipping limiter to make it so that you have a lot of flexibility. You can really screw the audio up, right? Okay. So finally, what I want to talk about is, you know, how you might want to think about this. Now, if I'm working with stutter edit, what I can do is all you have to do is hit a key and watch. Now we've moved on to C sharps, that gesture associated with C sharp three D and so on. So if I click back to C, we can see that that one that I made with the comb filter is already there. So the, the workflow here for creating a really awesome series of effects that you can use later, maybe you want to use them live, maybe you want to use them for some sound design, whatever. You can just click on these different keys and then turn them on. Okay. So I'll click on this one and I'll leave it on this stutter mode, right? I won't do any editing. I'll click on D and I'll turn off the stutter and maybe I'll turn on low pass, right? And it's already got some settings with it. I'm just doing this very quickly. So I'm moving on to uh, E flat D sharp. I'm gonna turn this one on. This will be a stutter, but instead we're gonna go in here and we're gonna change this around and maybe I'll just for the fun of it, add some delay, okay? So now when I play this, I can go between all four of these. Okay, so some final thoughts I want to leave you with. Um, you might look at this and be like, well, there's no this or there's no that. Like, I want this effect or that effect. Stutter Edit is basically a delay line effect. You can create almost any effect you've ever heard out of using delay lines. Delay lines are kind of contribute to every modulation effect you've ever heard. And the buffer section can make all kinds of really wacky stuff uh, down to the really small granular kind of stuff because of how quickly the buffer can sample and how quickly the stutter can play back the audio, right? You can have a lot of fun with this stuff and it takes a little bit of tweaking, but man, you can get some really crazy effects with this thing.
Now, of course, I've only covered the very smallest amount of this incredibly deep plugin. I mean, if you strike a relationship with this plugin and you're using it every single day, you'll get so deep into it that it'll become something you reach for all the time. I use it all the time. It's incredible, especially live. I have been using Stutter Edit on stage for 10 years and it has never let me down. It's rock solid. I've never had like a, a, a crash in Ableton from using Stutter Edit. It's, it's, it's pretty great. I should also say that I'm not in any way, shape or form uh, affiliated with Isotope at all. I just think this is a really good plugin. Cool. So if you like this kind of thing, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Much love, everybody. I'll see you next time.